everyone. Hey, welcome back to Vagina Talk. This is our podcast by Drs. Kimball and Kimball. I am David Kimball, my beautiful wife, Alexis May Kimball. And we're here to embark on another episode and a super exciting episode of Vagina Talk. So today we're actually inviting Stephanie Costello. Um, you may not have heard the name, but I think after this podcast, you won't forget her name. <laughs> so to all, she's more known as a relationship expert, an intimacy expert, actually a self-exploration expert, something we all can use, something we have too little of in our lives. So the kind of unique thing about Stephanie is that she dealt with a lot of PTSD issues in her life. And over kind of that experience and her background and having a degree in psychology, she decided to kind of transform her entire life into saying, you know, I'm going to coach people on not to get in a place where I was, to be able to help find that freedom, that safety net, to be able to kind of express themselves and work through some tough times in their relationship. So from my perspective, I think this is going to be a super exciting podcast. I think so too. I'm, we're so excited to talk to Stephanie. Um, she's really, really is focused on sort of helping the individual kind of find what they need out of a relationship and kind of navigate those waters. So I totally agree. Something we can all use more of in our life is just that support and kind of helping us find our voice to be the person we need to be for ourselves and for the people in our lives who we love. Yeah, and I think you know, for us, Stephanie kind of embodies a lot of the values and principles that we really embrace and foster here in our own Kimball Center for Intimate Cosmetic Surgery, in the sense that we want to have a and create an open environment, kind of a warm, safe, all inclusive environment. So you can kind of explore some of the concerns that you have in a very open forum um, and feel like you're going to find that safety and freedom. You're right. I mean, so well put. We love that safety and freedom. So without any further ado, we warmly welcome Stephanie Costello. So tell us a little bit about you and sort of what you do and how you sort of um, embarked on the journey. Yeah, so intimacy and relationship mentor is the term I've chosen. Um, I had take a very systemic approach to the work that I do. So I basically call it therapy on steroids. So when you start with a couple, um, or is it required that you're a couple in order to engage in kind of some of this discovery? No. So sometimes I do start with the individual and depending on the um, openness of the partner or the other individual that they're engaging in, it, they may come in on their own and they might work separately with me. And then together they're able to, because they have the same foundational knowledge, they're, they're able to work it out themselves. Sometimes they start with me, we separate a little bit, come back. It, it's really moldable to the individuals. What would you say is the most common reason people search you out? I said this and why aren't they listening? <laughs> or this is what I'm asking for, but they, they aren't doing it right. Or, um, you know, I oftentimes I work with people pleasers, so they don't understand why they give so much to everybody else, but they don't feel that same reciprocation in return. And so helping them with their communication and their boundary setting is really at the core, uh, assertive communication and, and setting boundaries within that communication and then holding themselves and others to those boundaries that they have set. You know, they often like, they're not respecting my boundary. And then my response is, well, how much did you hold it? How much did you hold them to that boundary that you're asking them to respect? And they're so used to you not holding boundaries. It's going to take some time for them to start to learn how to respect this new version of communication. I think you said that so well. We so agree. I think the first thing is sort of to have that relationship with ourselves to say, first, I'm going to make that change within myself and then to insist upon it externally to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's the hardest one to fix or to begin with. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that you kind of bring it back and say, well, how did you, you know, hold your boundaries and insist upon it? I often take uh, the way I explain that to clients is mindset. If you're looking, if your thoughts are going through this pattern of when my environment changes, then I'll be happy. Then you're kind of looking at it backwards. It's when I'm happy inside, then my environment will change. Yeah, it's really true. Sort of like what you bring to it. 
Yeah, and I think as women's healthcare experts, we see often patients come in for a medical condition, yet there's multiple layers of emotions, of you know, stresses and traumas that occurred previous in life that really have a huge impact upon that medical condition. So it's really kind of a breath of fresh air, essentially, to know that someone like you is out there advocating for, you know, patients, not just women, but men in general, too. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And I think the emphasis, like you said, on the system or the community, or if you bring it down to more of a nuclear level, like the Mm. family, it's related to like females, especially when we present with a medical condition. It's really hard. I find that a lot of our patients, before they make a definitive decision, many, many are like, I have to discuss this with my family. How will this affect my family? How will so-and-so respond? Do they think it's right? And You know, I see at different phases with some of our patients, depending on where they're at, sometimes they're like, I'm ready. And then I'll be like, I remember when, you know, it it took a while, like months or if not years to sort of make a decision. So I I think the family and the community and the system is really, really very like intricately related to even being well uh, when we're talking about intimate wellness and female uh, health. Absolutely. And the one of the things I try to help clients do is not look at it contextually. Um, try not to get lost in the story of the exam of what you're feeling and the the thing you're picking to really focus your energy on that's happening in your environment. I try to help them understand uh, a little bit deeper than that of what's really going on. If you took that situation out and applied it to any other topic in your life that you're not happy with at the core of it, particularly to their family dynamic at the core of it, there's a foundational structural mishap that's happening here. The communication is what you're saying is not being heard. What they're saying may not be heard by you, or, you know, you could be misunderstanding each other. We all use the example of love, the word love. We all have our own images. We know what the word, you know, if we looked at the dictionary, we know what it means, but we all have our own images of what love means to us. And so to be able to communicate through our language, our, our, our pictures, and then also hear somebody else's words and then try to see what their picture is, is a very challenging thing to do. And that's where that miscommunication happens. And so um, teaching clients just to be patient with the process and try not to take things personally, um, try not to make any assumptions and, and show up with a, from a place of curiosity instead of determination to make my point, you know, the priority. <laughs> right, yeah. to win, yes. Mm-hmm. Have you read that book, The Five Languages of Love? Mm-hmm. I think that's like such an amazing book because it just really talks about how we, a lot of us start with the right, great intention, but maybe our delivery you know, it's not picked up (laughs) on the other end. And Um, sometimes we deliver in our own ways. Right. And um, so there's this, that kind of brings in this like healthily selfish versus um, selfless. And, you know, when I say healthily selfish, I very intentional. Selfish is not a dirty word uh, (laughs) in my book. Um, That's great. And 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 our health vagina is not a dirty word. I love it. Yes. (laughs) Love it. Um, so yeah, we, we, uh, oftentimes that, you know, it's time to be selfish. Oh, I can't do that. And there's this whole, you know, reaction to it, which goes into a lot of things we won't bring into this podcast today, but, um, there, there's a, an intense amount of disconnect between how incredibly selfless we are, especially, um, particularly women often, and then how lack of self, um, how to know how to be selfish, in a way that's comfortable, in a way that is received by others in a, in a healthy way and not judged. And um, yeah. Is there a, uh, what do you find is the biggest obstacle to sort of helping somebody really embrace that or understand that, mm-hmm. that difference or that distinction? Biggest obstacle, that's a great question. Um, Blind beliefs really is the biggest obstacle. You know, for example, why is it that we are not allowed to talk to the person in the stall next to us in a public bathroom, right? 
well, if you don't have any toilet paper, you might be yeah, like, hey, exactly. do you have any you can pass underneath? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, exactly. about it. <laughs> yeah. But there's no rule book that says right. we have to do that, right? There's no sign on the wall that says, do not talk to the person in the cell next to you. <laughs> it's just because that's what we follow and that's what we watch and observe and learn. And so um, that's kind of how I, that's the exact example, example I often give. And then I help them kind of figure out like, where else do you have some blind beliefs that you may have witnessed or watched or was told and didn't realize you were told, you know, in your childhood or at work or whatever in your developmental years, where are these kind of, where are you moving from? And, and how is that disconnected from who you're trying to be today? That is so true. I think as individuals, we kind of create our own points of obstruction, you know, our own kind of belief system that uh, doesn't allow us to excel or to carry on to that next level. So we kind of really limit ourselves in essence. So mm-hmm. when you kind of bring that out, you know, I think on your website, one of the things I love the most about it was safety and freedom. In the sense, you're, you're providing that safety and the, or their ability to say, I'm free now. I'm free of all these obstacles I carried all these years. I'm free of all these biases that have really pulled me down and prevented me from excelling. So, you know, we kind of employ the same thing with our patients here to say, this is your body, this is the condition you have, this is the ability to change that, to change your life. Mm, thank you for uh, that synopsis, because that's in a nutshell what it, what my intention is with the, the title. And oftentimes people who aren't, don't have that level of awareness, are like, what does this mean? And it's like, I'm so glad you're asking, because that means that you need to know, you need to learn for yourself how to embrace this, um, yeah. you know, helping clients find safety in the freedom they create, uh, not living by somebody else's design, not living by what others are telling you you have to live or what you're observing and then feeling you have to be um, is, is definitely incredible to see that evolutionary process when they do get to that place of freedom. Um, Brene Brown talks about, you know, courage and vulnerability and how you can't have one without the other. But in society, we are naturally taught that you have to be courageous and you're not, particularly men, you're not allowed to cry, right? And then, um, then, but you can't have courage without vulnerability. You need both in order to, to thrive. And so vulnerability, you know, you're not allowed to cry. You have to, you have to be the big, strong one. And that, that creates that, man. yeah, right. And that creates that disconnect in, in the human, like I'm supposed to be courageous, but I'm not allowed to be vulnerable and this is hard. And, you know, what am I doing here? And. Right. Um, she also talks about belonging and how um, the the courage to stand alone, but also belong to the the common the our communities and how to belong to our communities, but also stand alone when we need to and and navigating that journey and that's the essence of safety and freedom is being able to be an individual, being able to be who we are and still belong together without having to impose our beliefs and our thoughts on each other. Totally. And I think even with all of that too, is just letting go of beliefs we had about ourselves, mm-hmm. so giving us the ability to shrug all that off and that weight off as well. Like sometimes it's not even by another person. It's what we impose upon mm-hmm. ourselves. Exactly. Probably the hardest um, sometimes. Obstacle. Yeah. Yeah. And knowing that who we were before is going to come up again, that there's never a destination we get to where we're like, oh, I've made it. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. 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 It's evolution. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we kind of like adopt and let go and flourish and even explain ourselves like different phases of our lives. Like right. can't say that, you know, I would have loved myself at a 20 as a 20 year old. I don't know yeah. if I would have been friends with myself, you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it's like it's really just kind of a way self-discovery, just as much as we're discovering the world, I think is um really, really important. They kind of go together. Mm-hmm. Clients often sometimes that, you know, usually around the three month mark, they're like, I already, I already fixed this. Why is this back again? Like they're so <laughs> frustrated. So body. <laughs> yes. And they're like, you know, I, it's, it's usually it's because they've learned all the information. They were so proud of it. So excited. They're ready to integrate it. They're integrating it and they're practicing. And then all of a sudden another transition in their life happens where somebody is not embracing their transition, not embracing what their, their new way of thinking and, and living and being. And then they're like, I'm rejected again, right? Those feelings of rejection come up and then a lot of their past starts to come up again. And it's just this, and that's where I help them understand it's an evolutionary process of, of working through the ebbs and flows, knowing and 
kind of radical acceptance, which is like chewing on broken glass and trying to swallow it, um, that your, your, your parts are going to come up again and showing up with love towards them. That's the biggest piece with love. Yeah. That's really well said. Um, what would you say for someone's partner? So if a person is sort of going through this journey of trying mm -hmm. to get to this place, you know, how does their partner actually support them in that process? Not necessarily going through it, um, you know, him On their own. Yeah. 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 Yes. If not, they're not discouraged and they're supported and also for the relationship to not feel strained at the same time. Definitely very challenging because it depends on the willingness of the partner oh, yeah. uh, and the strength of, uh, I don't want to say maturity, but understanding, awareness, right? Different, different levels. Yeah, maturity is definitely not the right word because I feel like that's very oppressive. Um, but the, so it depends. And I can speak for, say, one of my younger clients, fresh out of school, uh, ready to be engaged or ready to be getting ready to be married and stuff. And the working with the one partner and the other partner has come in a couple of times and then all it's taken is maybe two conversations with me. Um, and then they're able to figure out like what's happening because the part, what I have to warn partners, particularly the woman I work with, you know, I know you're super passionate about what you're learning and you're passionate about what we're going through right now in our call together. Be careful not to go word vomit on your partner because they're going <laughs> to feel attacked and they're like, not know what to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they're going to the everything you're trying to say. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of mentoring around uh, how to have the conversation, how to be patient, knowing that you're super passionate and it's okay to be passionate, but it's also important to that whole standing alone and connecting at the same time and helping them learn how to balance that. Well, it seems like you kind of brought this down to um, a science and, as, <laughs> you know, which is really good, which is wonderful because, you know, you kind of have a starting point, the midpoint, kind of what you feel is going to be the end point, And you can see that transition or evolution over time. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's really great because I think a lot of relationship, um, you know, experts or counselors kind of don't have that sense of, you know, the, the science behind it. So I think that's for your degree in psychology, which I have also, okay. um, it is really very helpful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It definitely is. And I can't, it's so important because today, I mean, the way we're relating and all the mediums and platforms with which we have to kind of navigate, you know, where our lives are interrupted by cell phones laptops, mm -hmm. emails, social and, media. I mean, it takes a yeah. lot away from like a relationship, right? Because mm -hmm. like your work and the demands external to your personal life are always there. It's like that was sent in five minutes and must be responded to, but it right. takes away from your time, whether it's yes. Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday or the week. And I think having the support, you know, someone like you to sometimes help us figure out maybe that's something I need to change. And then maybe mm. my world will change around me to kind of make what two people share like even more. Yes. Yeah. I often joke around and say, uh, people pay me a lot of money to teach them how to have 20 second hugs. <laughs> Touch and go, touch and go. Right. Yeah, it's like 20 straight. second hugs. All I'm asking is 40 seconds of your day, right? You know, oh, once in the morning once the, when you come together and and they have this huge, you know, breakthrough of this vulnerability to share vulnerability and feel trusting into the relationship. The honeymoon phase does always come to an end at some point where it's there. Then they're like, they want the 20 second hug, but they're, they're fighting it. And I want to ask for it, but they're not coming to me. And like this whole, that <laughs> exact yeah, yeah. challenge of their, of their communication. And that's, it's really telling, which is very fun. Yeah. Well, well being I have to be careful. Yeah, <laughs> of course. I say yeah. it's fun, but sometimes it's not fun for them. So I have to be careful. And I'm like, I'm so <laughs> proud of you. And they're like, I just worked at the hardest thing in the world. I'm like, I know, I'm sorry. It's, it's just <laughs> super exciting to see you fighting through. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, Stephanie, we could carry this on probably indefinitely because <laughs> yes. it's such a delight to talk to you. Mm, you. Um, and again, we applaud you for what you're doing for yeah. relationships and, you know, women and people in general. Mm. Um, last few words that you can offer our audience, any points of advice, how to contact you, those kind of things. Absolutely. Um, so one of the, this new process that I'm kind of 
identifying is, you know, I identity rebirth, relationship restore, and intimacy revive. If any of those three are things that you're struggling with or wanting help on, let's just have a conversation. That's kind of, that's like the gist. Um, we don't need to get into all the difficult stuff. It's just having a conversation. And then my website is www.safetyinfreedom.com. And you can get free resources there. You can schedule time with me and then learn more about what we're all about. Awesome. Oh my God, <laughs> Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, it is a true delight. Yes, yeah. guys. Thank you so much for listening to Vagina Talk Podcast. If you want to learn more, you can find us on our web, www.kimballcenter or pelvicwellness.com. See you next time. Bye.